Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. So, welcome to part two of my little servo motor series. Last week, we talked about the actual mechanical components and the mechanical operation of the servo motor. But this week, I actually want to see how you talk to it. How do you send it a signal? How do you move the servo motor? So I want to see the electrical side of servo motors. We're going to be seeing the standards of it, like the, the little pulse width that you have to send to it, power requirements. Uh, I don't know, anything that's pertinent, I will hopefully go over. Any questions, put it on the YouTube comments or the website comments. I don't care. Let's go. So I basically just drew on this sheet. The only things I really care about for servo standards, uh, the packaging itself, like uh, the actual case of the servo, they do have standards, I'm pretty sure, but I won't go over that because I am not uh, knowledgeable on the, the package sizes. But I do know about the electrical side because it is so damn simple. So there's no reason why you should not understand any of this after this video. Um, the servo motor is controlled by pulse width modulation, okay? So by giving it a certain pulse width, at a repetitive period the servo motor will move accordingly okay so I, I it's it's all written down here and the period is usually 20 milliseconds okay so that's a 50 Hertz frequency and the pulses are between 0.9 milliseconds and 2.1 milliseconds and that that equates from 0.9 as in the zero angle and 2.1 as in the the, the biggest angle you've got for the servo for so for this one which I said to be around like I don't know 160 degrees rotation 0.9 milliseconds would be from the uh, counterclockwise most point and 2.1 milliseconds will be from the farthest point so that would be the 160 so if I go all the way back that is 0.9 and if I rotate it clockwise all the way there that should be 2.1 so that is the electrical standard um, here so power and signal has to be given to the servo over a cable right so we've got a three position female header just standard 100 thou and I screwed up on this okay don't look at the colors but on one side there's black which is ground in the center you've got the supply voltage which will actually power the motor and then on the the far side from ground which will be the yellow is uh, your PWM signal and that signal I don't think it has to be the same voltage as your supply voltage but it just has to be something that it can take usually all that electrical stuff is included with the specifications of your servo so check that out I think the servos usually take like for sure 5 volts but some take more like bigger ones probably take more this this big one here that I used on my robot arm for sure takes more than 5 volts I think its maximum was actually maybe like 6.4 but it for sure took 5 volts which was handy because all our servos took 5 volts all our servos had the same period for this pulse and all our servos had the same uh, pulse width so that is the whole idea of standardization using this handy little Adafruit board uh, which is just a breakout board for the PCA 9685 this is technically uh, an LED driver except it is totally way better off uh, driving some servos because it outputs 16 PWM channels that can do 50 Hertz and uh, so we used this for our project and it was very nice all our servos were programmed the same right 50 Hertz and uh, 0.9 to point uh, 2.1 millisecond pulses and this it just makes it so much easier to program beautiful standardization so I have my Arduino kind of snaking from my computer all the way to my test equipment setup in a moment I'm gonna hook it up to this servo but I want to show you guys what the waveform looks like on the oscilloscope so here on the Arduino I have a sketch that is just sweeping through the 900 microsecond to 2100 microsecond and uh, that's that's your servo motor pulse there okay and you've got you've got a period of 20 milliseconds that's your 50 Hertz and if you zoom in I could show you a single pulse and you could see it's sweeping now let's actually hook this little bad boy up so there's a lot of resources on the internet 
to show you how to hook up these servo motors it's very simple and uh, in the end you get some some movement just like this right I just literally taped on a piece of of tape and screwdriver on here and just to show you guys how this is actually working and uh, but it's that simple I literally just took some example code from the Arduino IDE plugged it into my Arduino and this is working like right off the bat look at that little thing that is a servo motor and it could be used for so many cool things like especially with remote controlled vehicles airplanes helicopters and and cars and stuff it's uh you could do a lot with this not just including remote control stuff there's a lot of other applications for these little guys so because of standardization in the remote control car industry or like remote control helicopter or airplane industry it makes it so that you always know what you're getting into the the standard package makes it so that when I talk about a servo motor you think oh you know that little rectangular box with the servo horn on it and you know exactly how it could be used in your project you know exactly how you could use it in future projects the standard electrical input the pinout and uh, the frequency the 50 Hertz with the the pulse width that is also standard and that makes it very interchangeable when when I'm talking about remote control airplanes it's very simple because all you need to do is get the airplane which is expensive but then you get the transmitter like the the remote controller and you on the airplane you have this little box that receives the commands from your your handset and this little box sends out the 50 Hertz pulse width and it, it's very simple because it doesn't matter you just get your servos you hook it up to that little box and your airplane is good to go very simple that is standardization and that's how it is has impacted the remote control industry also it, it applies to remote control cars the the more expensive ones too if it's um, driven by you know a single servo uh, directing its wheels well you you know that if if that servo breaks you could just easily go get a different brand servo with the same angle of actuation or whatever you want to call it and uh, just stick it right in there and your remote control car is going to work again and you're not just confined to remote control applications with servos. I've seen people use servos to, to tune uh, a tuning capacitor for a radio. I've seen it used for a moving camera gantry kind of system. And like it's, you, you could just use it for anything. They've, they've came a long way since, since a while back. And uh, like that little package, they've optimized everything about it. Like the gears, the drive shaft and all that stuff that's inside the little black box that is your servo is so optimized nowadays that it's just that's that's just engineering so I hope you learned something from this episode today I am Justin your host from Tin Man Electronics if you like the video give it a thumbs up that helps a lot with the search engine optimization subscribe to my channel check out my website at www.tinmanelectronics.com follow me on Twitter at Justin Tin Man. Uh, I hope to post some or tweet I guess that's the word tweet some Really cool stuff about electronics. Just follow me, I guess. That's engineering. Not Twitter. I'm talking about this. What I'm doing is engineering.